Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, I'm going to talk about five things that I really like about Sony cameras that don't often get mentioned. Now, along with this video, I actually made one talking about five issues or problems that I have with Sony cameras that aren't often talked about. So stay until the end of this video. There's going to be a card that you guys can click to check that one out as well. The first thing on my list is the ability to set up custom button configurations for photo and video. So on the video side, I have it set to uh, punch in and out between APS-C and full frame mode. One button does my audio levels. Another one instantly switches between autofocus and manual focus. Um, another one will zoom in if I want to do like clear image zoom. So I have all these settings for video, but then if I want to go out and shoot stills, I can have a full configuration for stills. So I can make use of all those buttons and not waste any compared to other cameras where if I set function one on my GH5 to audio levels, when I go out and shoot photos, that button is completely wasted. So it's so convenient to have this and I hope all cameras going forward have this option. The second thing on my list is the ability to shoot 4K in 60 megabits per second. Now I know in this day and age, everybody wants really high bit rates that take up a lot of card space. They want 10 bit, 400 megabit per second, but there are certain scenarios where you really don't need that bit rate. For example, somebody talking and not really a lot of movement or details going on in the shot. I mean, this set has a little bit of detail in the background, but say you're recording like a conference where you have a guy just standing there talking with a plain background and you're recording for long periods of time. It's nice to be able to cut down to 60. You're not going to get any noticeable detail loss or anything like that because there's barely any detail in the scene and you can save almost half of the card space and make your cards go a lot longer, especially if you're doing a lot of this type of recording, hard drive space, SSD space gets saved as well. So I definitely appreciate that option. Number three on our list is the ability to punch in while you are recording to check your focus. Now it is true that the rear LCDs aren't very detailed, especially when you're shooting in 4K video. You don't get a very detailed image compared to shooting photo. And I talk about that in my five downsides or issues with the Sony cameras, but it is still nice to be able to punch in while you're recording and make sure that your shot is in focus. Most cameras have that ability before you hit the record button, but as soon as you start recording, that option is is gone, so I definitely appreciate that. Number four is the SNQ setting. So this allows you to record slow motion and quick motion. So if you set it up to record one frame per second in 1080p, you can have like a 20 minute video turn into something that's, I don't know, about one minute long, basically like a time lapse in camera. And on the other end, the slow motion aspect, you can do, let's say 120 FPS, and then the camera will conform it or slow it down to 30. So the slow motion is already done in camera. You don't have to do it yourself. Now, the great thing about this is since it's a separate setting on the dial, you can be recording 4K video and then all of a sudden you want to grab something in slow motion, flick the dial to the SQ setting, and as long as you have it preset up to what you want, bam, you can record some slow motion, flick the dial again, and you're back to shooting 4K, which is so convenient compared to the Panasonics where you have to go from in the menu, go from 4K to 1080p, go into the variable frame rate option, enable that, and then go back to record. Now on top of that, what Sony allows you to do is you can have the SNQ setting for having the camera slow down your video clips for you, but you can also record 120 frames per second in real time, meaning it's not slowed down ahead of time and you still retain all of your audio. So that way you can be recording in the 1080p and you just slow down the portions you want later in post and still have the audio to work with, which is really great. That's something that Panasonic's don't offer. If you're recording above 1080p at 60, you lose all your audio, it's pre-slowed down, and you also don't get autofocus where the Sony retains the autofocusing ability. So Sony's giving us a lot of options. They're making it really quick and convenient to switch between 4K and then like slow motion. So I really appreciate that. Now, number five, the last thing on my list is the clear image zoom. Now, this has been so convenient in my shooting because it just gives you so much flexibility. Now, right now I'm shooting with the a7R 3 and I switched over to a 28 millimeter f2 lens. That's why you guys are seeing a wider shot here and the camera is able to go between full frame and APS-C mode. Now you can't do that while you're recording, but what you can do is use clear image, which basically gives you flexibility to go from one times, which is full frame, all the way to 1.5 in a variety of steps. So I'm gonna have a deem go ahead and use a clear image zoom. Did you go to 1.5 now? So this is basically the APS-C crop. We're actually probably getting slightly better detail than we were in the full frame mode because it's using more data from the sensor. So if you're shooting in full frame and and all of a sudden you need to get a little bit closer. You can't switch your lens. You can hit that button 
and zoom in basically and you're not losing any detail. Now on top of that, if you're shooting already in the APS-C crop, so here we are in APS-C mode and our 28 millimeter full frame lens is now roughly 42 millimeters long. So we have like an additional focal length. Now what we could do is enable the clear image zoom, go ahead and do that and just do it slowly this time. And we have steps from 1.1, uh, 1 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, all the way to 1.5. And now you're seeing that the framing is changing and now we have roughly a 63 millimeter lens. So one lens gives us a variety of focal lengths and as long as you're not shooting in really bad low lighting conditions, the quality is still very good. So it's great to have this flexibility. And if you're shooting like that on an A6300 or an A6500, um, since that's using 6K downsampling, you can go up to two times clear image zoom. So if you have a 50, it's gonna turn into a 100 and anywhere in between. Now some other cameras like the GH5 will give you an, uh, a teleconverter option of 1.4, but you're limited to 1.4 and you have to do it beforehand. Here, while we're recording, we can zoom in, zoom out. If you need to get a little tighter, you have that ability. And it just really gives your prime lenses so much more flexibility um, than you had before. Now, another great thing with the clear image zoom is if you have a lens that can't get very close to an object, you wanna get kind of, kind of like a macro shot, but you're limited to say two feet minimal focusing distance, you can stay at that two feet and then enable the clear image zoom and that's gonna bring you a lot closer. The video is gonna seem like you're a lot closer to the object. So you can kind of fake macro shots with this as well. All right guys, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you wanna see more videos like this one, hit that subscribe button and enable those notifications. If you guys wanna see my top five issues or problems with Sony cameras that really bug me, click right over here and you guys can check that video out as well. This has been Max and I will see you in the next video.